Well, a lot of people have brought out a lot of memories today about Carlaw Park and it has had a very special place in the hearts of everybody who loves league. As people talked about their most memorable game or the, the one that certainly stuck in the memory the most, I remember the time I came to see the New Zealand Women's Rugby League play the English. I've got to say I felt sorry for those English girls. <laughs> they were almost trampled underfoot here at Carlaw Park. Our team was just, just too good. But right here in the centre of town, bordering the domain, close to the Auckland Central Business District, Parnell, Carlaw Park has been the focal point for league in Auckland and New Zealand. And many of you here will think back to those glory days Dramatic one-off test against the French in 1951. John Rebo's heartbreaking try to win the second 1985 test for Australia. Or the revenge a week later when the Kiwis came back 18-0, as someone's already referred to. Of course, we can go uh, way back to earlier days of our city, before the grandstands and the terraces were built in 1916. The site was originally a flour mill. And then it was a Chinese market garden, so it's got a lot of history to it. It became the official home of Auckland Rugby League when the President, the Honourable Arthur Myers, opened the park in June 1921. and was named, of course, after James Carlaw, the long-serving Auckland Rugby League administrator. In terms of the record books, it's going to take a long time for any other park to equal the record of Carlo Park. This park hosted 68 of the 123 league test and World Cup games which have been played in New Zealand. The spectators loved it because of its intimacy and you could hear and almost feel the big hits when sitting in the wooden grandstand. The grandstand, now gone, was opened by the Governor-General Lord Bledisloe in 1934. Others have referred to the press box perched on top of the grandstand. It swayed in the slightest breeze, but it's said that it offered the best perspective on the game of any stadium in the rugby league world. Of course, the playing surface was also notorious for its tendency to turn to mud at even the suspicion of rain. And we're told one of the French managers complained at one time that it was mud, mud, mud. Presumably they hadn't done so well in our muddy conditions. Carlow Park was used for other attractions. Professional boxing's been here, international soccer, supercross, motorcycling, and even Billy Graham came and preached here in the past. It's had a golf driving range here in the 60s as well. George Rainey certainly was a visionary chair of the Auckland Rugby League. I'm not sure that he could ever have imagined when he uh, led the decision uh, for the purchase in 1974 for $200,000 uh, that a decade later it was going to be worth about $13 million. It was a brave decision in 74, but a very, very uh, wise one. The embankment behind the railway stand was bought from Rail Corp for $35,000 in 1994 and the road access from Stanley Street uh, cost just over a quarter of a million dollars. Well, I guess we're here because we all acknowledge that time caught up with Carlow Park. It was closed in 2002 because of the financial burden of maintaining the ageing facilities. And there were also health and safety concerns. The last major club matches on these grounds, well, I would have to mention Mount Albert's 24-20 victory over Hibiscus Coast in the Barter Card Cup Grand Final and also Hibiscus Coast's 44-40 extra time win over Otahuhu in the Fox Memorial. And there was a lot of nostalgia on that September day in 2002. So, as time moves on, we look forward to the new Carlaw Park, the mixed development we've been hearing uh, about today. And while for the Rugby League fraternity it's the end of an era, we know that the combination of the sale proceeds and the long-term lease is helping secure the future of the game. And that will certainly be one of Carlaw Park's most important legacies. So thank you, Auckland Rugby League, for inviting me to be part of today's closure ceremony. 
and let's look forward to more great league in New Zealand on other grounds in the tradition pioneered by Carlaw Park. Kia ora.